you decided to go to Daytona. What 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 prompted you to take a group of guys and go down to the Daytona 500? Jerry asked me to drive the race car. Uh. At Daytona, I was resting in the back of our station wagon, and I heard a car running in the pits. Pretty handy where we were. And, I, and it was the day I was supposed to time travel. So. And when we had come by, I said, what's that running? I said, it sounds like it's missing a little bit. And it was, it was Julian playing with the race car, the distributor. And we qualified probably 10 miles an hour slower than the car would run. You got it out of time? You got, you got something wrong. I, Person. Okay, Pearson. He spun in front of me. What did he? In the, in the 125s or whatever you were running in. And I put it down on the infield at, at 150 miles an hour. <laughs> and I don't know how many times I turned around. But I come out of this right side up and everything. That, Sitting down around the racetrack. And he he had hit the fence up in the one and two corner. And things were happening around. And I got on enough grass that missed it all. The fans first arrived to watch sprint races and practice sessions less than a week before the big 500 mile race. Nobody knew what might happen. practice and time trials for the 500 mile Grand National, they wondered, how fast can a stock car run? Now they know. They tried to build the safest track in the world, designed for unlimited speed. But the drivers wondered if this were possible. At 153 miles an hour, they were at the edge of control. At 154, some were beyond it. Some kept trying. Now they know, the drivers and the fans, that no track is unlimited. A 4,000 pound race car will do some amazing tricks at 154 miles an hour. It acts more like an ice cube on a tin plate than a road holding machine with a man in control. This chilled the driver's bravery. There was almost nothing they could do once it got away. and fans were quick to learn about the limits of speed. They learned a race car can't fly. The old rules of racing still apply. A winning race driver is a man who will go as fast as a track allows. Race day, 58 cars in the starting line. The rest wrecked and ruined. That is the story hidden behind the glittering paint and race day excitement. Speed has reached a critical point. The racing stock cars are on their way. Throw the fastest qualifiers, Fireball Roberts in number 22, and next to him, Joe Weatherly in number eight. 
both new 1961 wide track Pontiacs in the first big race of the year. Strung out for half a mile along the back stretch are Pontiac, Chevrolet, Ford, Thunderbird, Dodge, Oldsmobile, and Chrysler. Into the third and fourth turn, the pace is faster. Number 22, Roberts at the wheel, qualified for the front row by running 155.7 miles an hour. Weatherly was only a hair slower. Nobody on that racetrack is slower than 145, except the pace car. And now that is moving off the track. They'll get the green flag now. And the race is on. Making only one pit stop, Roberts has run half the race at an average speed of 151 miles an hour. Now running second, Marvin Panch. The tension mounts as the laps tick away. With less than 50 miles to run, Fireball Roberts has set a new record at every distance. His average speed at the end of 450 miles is still more than 151 miles an hour. But something is wrong. Is it Roberts? There's a car heading into the pits. It is Fireball. With only 13 laps to go, Fireball Roberts is in the pits. Roberts is the victim of a freak mechanical failure. Vibration shook the starter loose. It fell, bounced off the racetrack, and tore a hole in the oil pan. Panch, number 20, is warned that Weatherly is right behind him. But Roberts hasn't the heart to watch the battle of his teammate going through the last laps. A half a mile an hour faster. 16 seconds separate Weatherly and Mechanic Moore from position one. But that Panch can run. Goldsmith number 31 is third. Pontiacs are leading the field of 27 cars still running. Panch bores ahead, coming up to the checkered flag. Uh oh Larry Frank slides into the infield and out of... as Marvin Patch wheels his Pontiac across the finish line. This ride has earned Marvin Patch more than $20,000, the lion's share of the total purse of almost $100,000. Patch also moves up in the NASCAR point standings for the national championship. Marvin Panch, in a Pontiac, completed the 500-mile run at an average speed of 149.6 miles an hour, a new world's record for a continuous 500-mile race anywhere. His speed broke the existing Daytona record by almost 15 miles, leaving no question that this has been the fastest of them all. <laughs>